Saida? Kako malo matra ke da ta ta paise ra ke ha? Har che chilare. Khara palu mati kana? Flash sharu na? Na ta ko ta ko ta ko mung sara de kana na? Tara za. Na na ta 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 ko de chilare. Ta za. Har che chike de muke. Bas dam mulare da. Zai mule ispi na wika. Sorry, we're exiting out this way. We take these guys and put them down there. Hey, that's the one. Yeah, Hey, is that our rounds outgoing or the receiving rounds? The TO3 was maybe 100 yards. Nope, not even. Make sure they don't 203 us. 2 1, 2 4, 1 9, and 1 5. You're telling me. 203 rounds are about 100 meters off. Two of them. Hey, distance. Fucking 150 meters. I got one of them. How big? How big? Size, size. I just see two right now. Direction. Butter. Still there? Hey, somebody tell me what the fuck is going on! Egress, right pull back to the overhead. Flies ready for the mark. Is it 9-9? Yeah. Final attack heading south to north, ROA 421 through 424. Ground commander's call sign, deadbeat 1-6. And uh, I have to get approval okay. from uh, what? deadbeat 6 and from chosen 8-1. I'll let you know once we have approval. 65. 62570 Smoke this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. See the dust? Holy shit, that was awesome. There's the That's just one of my PDHA. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Go higher. Going home from the wall. RPG! Now, hey, dude, just come back. I'm walking right corner of that building, right? Yeah. That's only like a hundred meters. Hey, distance direction. Yeah. That's like directly that yeah, way, bro. That's a good one. Okay, I don't, I don't have a hard jump. RPG. Hey, ten birds, you get there. Yeah, I'm trying to distance. get a grid right now. Yeah, corner of the building. Eight, eight, nine, nine, six, five, seven, three. How copy? Eight. Hey, shit, shoot me another one from there, dude. Hey, you saw the shot, right? The corner of that building? Yeah. Hey, I'll hold that shit. Right over your head. You're not going to fight over your head. Hey, sir. Hey, Gordy, stand by for second grid on the roof. Oh, we got it. Ready? Ah, uh, we got no more movement over there, sir. Oh man, building. Hey, Gunny, we're no longer taking fire. 
from the building to our west here. Oh, excuse me, sir. Right now I'm looking hey, at how many two or three of guns we need up here? Down, down, down. I can't really tell at which yard line they're moving on. Yep. Hey, can you see him? Mm -hmm. They're still looking at us. <coughs> Throw a grenade in there. That's next door. Compound over. Well, alright. They're tossing from the cannot one over and they're not making it to us. Back. Yeah. <laughs> you missed. Hey, two or three up. Yeah. Hello. <coughs> Heads up. All right, I got one. Clear hot. All right. Stand by for shot. Stand by for shot. Faster shooting five. I had three in my sights, two went running the opposite direction where they came in. Yeah, that thing's loud if I have it. I think I got one of them, sir. Got a moped moving east to west at about 800. You'll catch him on that uh, on the right side yeah. in a couple seconds. There he goes. Talking about the moped? Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't engage that. Yeah. Now, dude, start getting off the moped and then turn the tree line definitely. Good. We got it. <coughs> See that penis shaped door right in front of us? If you go right behind that, that's where he is. Yeah.
We're asking about that wall which are So we want to tell that wall. Mama! 
Yeah, I understand, but I'm not, I'm not, that way I'm going to push my guys over. Come on, come on. 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 Come on
right here, sir. Right hey, crochet. Right, yeah. right above. Uh, yeah, I think that's a I think that's a tributary to it though. I think it's on the other side of that wall. I think this is all just uh this is run off diverted. This is small when it goes down, it continues down. Uh, you can see it as you get farther south it still continues. So pretty much every day that we went out on patrol, we had to go take the ground inch by inch, you know, uh, continually punching the enemy in the mouth as much as we could. Uh, we come back, refit, next day we had to go out. And uh, after a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, we were able to penetrate that defense, um, break out of that, and uh, establish some freedom of movement throughout the uh, upper Singapore Valley. We're, we're able to go, as opposed to when we first got here, within the first about 150 to 300 meters outside of the base, uh, we'd be in heavy contact um, with, you know, up to squad, uh, reinforce up to platoon sized enemy at times. Um, now, now we're able to, you know, go click out, sometimes completely unharassed. Uh, lately, um, you know, we've, we've got a balance of missions. Sometimes we'll, I'll have my guys go out just do We'll know uh, where some of the minefields are. We'll do an IED reduction type mission. Um, sometimes in the Syriagar, the brown side areas, we'll do uh, more coin type missions, um, focusing on the, the people over there. Uh, it's a little bit more of a permissive area, but um, sometimes we'll do these long range missions deep into the green zone, uh, do some patrol base ops, and we usually uh, find some pretty good weapons caches, get some pretty good fights, and. Uh, Take a toll on that. To take a toll on the enemy, and, and demonstrate to the local populace more than anything that that the Marines can go where they want to go. We'll stay where we want to stay, and, and that the enemy doesn't dictate that to us anymore. Uh, as opposed to when we first got here, the the enemy dictated a lot more of our actions. But uh, but but these days, you know, it's it's we've pretty much crushed that, and uh, we're moving about freely. Absolutely. Initially, you know, the the Taliban had their own rules of coin that they were following and and those they wanted as minimal amount of damage to the populace just like we want to minimize damage to the populace and uh, I think that they're a, they were able to do that in the beginning because you know it was kind of it was a pretty equal fight out here initially that they had the upper hand due to the due to the fact that they had these defenses established but now that we've kind of broke down those defenses and and literally killed probably a few hundred Taliban at this point. Um, I, I, I think that uh, they had to go to their plan B now. And you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And I think they're, uh, 
we, we smashed their oodle so many times that they've, they've got to take another course of action now because the people can see that you know the Marines do what they want at this point and uh, and that that type of show of force you know is is it's probably turning the people more uh, it's more appealing now to the people to side with coalition forces so uh, the Taliban pretty much I think out of desperation is now um, turning more towards a murder intimidation campaign uh, lots of threats every, every, everywhere I go these days uh, people are when I talk to you know the locals they're just talking about how um, you know we want to come to the post we want to uh, come to the, your medical initiatives everything but the Taliban says you know we're gonna kill you um, the Taliban puts IEDs in and around my house I want to come talk to you guys uh, they do it all at night but if they see me talking to you you know they're gonna kill me so it's it does seem that uh, these these murder intimidation campaigns have ramped up and uh, I, I would say that well, it's unfortunate for the, the local populace. It does demonstrate that the, the Marines uh, have the enemy on their heels right now. I mean, I've seen Marines when we've been trapped. We were in a U-shaped ambush, and uh, there, were, there was oscillating fire down the canal we were in, machine gun firing positions on each side, and literally every, every square inch of where we were was getting raked by enemy PKM fire, but it didn't didn't even face these guys you know they just jumped right out of the safety of their own cover onto an uncleared pass return fire suppress the enemy you know basically the other engineers and myself go out in front of all the squads to you know keep them from stepping on IEDs and losing legs and whatnot and today uh, we got lucky went out of the alleyway found some loose dirt dug it up and uh Found a pressure plate, so kept from one of the guys stepping on it. Well, uh, the reason I chose this job is, you know, it kind of gives me a rush, and I guess that's what a lot of the engineers are in it for. But I mean, it feels it's there's nothing like it when you find it, and uh, you know, you get to dig it up, and you know that like other guys are safe. You don't have to get them rushed home and have to tell their families that their legs got blown off or anything. So it's it's a really nice feeling. You know, it's it's a really good feeling, you know, uh, finding one of those out in an alleyway, especially when we're out doing a mission, keeping one of the guys from getting blown up or anything, and uh, just, it's, that way their families don't have to get one of those little red cross notes saying they got, like, legs blown off or something like that. That was north. northwest. Yeah, northwest. northwest. Roger. Good. Thanks are good. Continue. Try to get over there, either on this one or that one, so yeah. I could get. This combo right here, sir. Right in. Right, yeah. right above. Uh, yeah, I think that's a. I think that's a tributary to it, though. I think it's on the other side of that wall. I think this is all just uh, this is rough. diverted. This is small one, it goes down, it continues down. Uh, you can 
see it as you get farther south and stay continued. Yeah, Huh? I'm pretty sure I bought that. 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 I'm pretty sure I bought so that we can uh, establish a good government in this area. Atmospherics in the area are uh, very negative. Um, the people don't really uh, stay, stay around. In the morning, they'll leave. In the evening, they'll come back. And then all through the day, it's just us and the Taliban up here fighting. So the at atmospherics aren't where we'd like them. We'd like to get them a little bit higher, where people would actually like to stay in the area. But right now, they don't. Uh, the routine for our platoon at this time is uh, we use bounding overwatch everywhere uh, due to the engagements that we have here. Um, support by fires, lots of support by fires while we maneuver to another support by fire which will allow them to displace and maneuver behind us. Uh, we utilize mortars, uh, a lot of HEDP, uh, overwhelming fire superiority. Uh, wall charges to make entry into compounds to allow us so we don't have to walk through uh, danger areas and such. 
uh, that's normal for us to to maneuver around this area. The fighting in the area is getting better. Uh, before we couldn't come up here without getting engaged by a lot, a lot of individuals. 15, 20 guys would be engaging from several different locations. Uh, they tried to get you in a U-shape, O-shape ambushes. Um, but recently, uh, due to the, we, we've been taking the ground faster and faster. They've had less time to set up. So we're getting engaged by three, four guys at a time. And they only shoot a couple bursts and then they, they leave because they know we're going to kill them. Our mission is uh, to disrupt. Not, not to allow the enemy to maneuver as much as they would like. They want to move, maneuver around us, set an IED belts. They want to attack. Our mission when we patrol out of here is to disrupt that, catch them in the act of putting an IED in, catch them before they can shoot at us, um, shoot at them, kill them before they can come kill us. Uh, up here, there's the three block war, or the three stages, clear, hold, and build. Down in the southern portions, they're starting to move into the build phase. Up here, we're still clearing. So that's our mission up here. We're clearing this area. What's that? Look at this. How many water does he have left? We're going to set in four by fire positions. Along these buildings, by Cooper Woodall stick, he'll be pushing along the buildings over here, clearing out these buildings. And that's basically just the plan. It should be a short patrol. But uh, no, anybody knows what happens out here. We're probably going to take contact. If we take contact, it's going to come a little longer. And we're going to have good support by fire set in. So we're going to suppress the enemy. And that's about the gist of our patrol. We're going to push back to the PD. Covered. Yeah, and I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna try to find a way onto this roof so we can get a rifleman on this roof to cover out back here, right? Uh, door shut so we can get like Meniglia. Mendez on the roof. We can have them cover the door and door uh, southeast. Alright, Roger. Yeah, and I got this door. We Me got, and you'll take turns covering this door. We got posts over here. Alright, Roger. There's you can at least see some of the compounds and some of the tree lines. Other than that, I don't think there's another, another place. Good as they're gonna get. Is that fire? What's up? I thought I heard a burst, dude. Maybe not. Hey, just let me know if you can see anything up there because I can't see anything. Confirmed. Friendly's in building 36 and friendly's in the tree line between 36 and 37. Rogers, copy. Our friendlies in building 36 and tree line between 36 and 37. Alright, we're, we're good. As soon as this target gets spun up, we all can maneuver. You guys need to uh, be prepared to suppress for them, and then we're going to fire this target. Oh, that's an They're good on the roof. They keep it on this room. So it's still coming out of this room. Rim, I need you on that roof. He's on the roof. All right. Fahim, Fahim. Three. Can we see the floor?
Dave Ramos is a model for you. Send it. Come on, come on, come on. Roger. Hey, you, you guys have security right there. Yeah, no, I just got a lot coming on in. Alright, cool, we're gonna move in. Right, I'll try breaking the wall because you can't step it right here. Put this gun and then go. Okay. The mission of today's patrol was to uh, locate and establish a new patrol base to allow us to operate patrols out of it. Uh, uh, we moved the patrol base to kind of change it up a bit because if we keep the patrol base in one central location at all times besides the main patrol base, then it allows the enemy to establish uh, fighting positions and um, see our avenues, or, our avenues that we usually travel to um, and place IEDs and that kind of thing. So by moving the patrol base, it kind of chains it up and kind of throws a curveball towards the enemy. Uh, the reason why we did that is because um, since we've been operating so far up in the north, we've kind of been neglecting the western portion of our AO, uh, a piece of that we've already cleared and are establishing good relationship with the people, uh, trying to um, find teachers to to uh, work at schools and those kind of things. So what we did was move the patrol base further south to allow us to easier uh, interact with those people. And also, it's just to the uh, just to kind of the west of our patrol base along a tree line where we know there's uh, enemy activity trying to emplace IEDs. By keeping a presence in this general area, it'll hinder the enemy in actually placing these IEDs on us, so keeping us safe and looking safe at the same time. I'm telling you, dude, as soon as we get released for Lubo when we get back, I'm gonna find a motherfucking ride with 7 Eleven. I don't know that anybody is watching. Hey, you see that guy in that back tree line? Yeah, I've been watching him. Uh, I thought that was a new guy that just walked up. Oh, no, I haven't. Yeah, he's all the way to the left. He just, like, got down. Uh, hey, you walked into that tree line.
Um, right now we're clearing Cluster and Papa Nine Yankee for Taliban gear, things of that nature, and uh, so far nothing found.
probably give about a good five more minutes for uh, Alpha to push up to uh, Quebec on Bravo. Kind of lose all the ICOM traffic is coming from. Saying they're waiting for us to re enter the PB so they can start shooting at us. Bravo's gonna push it, or Alpha's gonna push to 92 and 93, and they're gonna hold there. Once they get set in, we are gonna fucking start moving from 7 6. We're gonna unmask, start pushing down along the Mississippi down south. Stay into the death blade, push out to the back side of it, the back of the compound where we gunned down that guy. Come down south, and if these guys start opening up on us, Alpha's gonna start uh, maneuvering on them. As that's happening, it's gonna look like we're going inside the PB, but we're not gonna go in the PB. We're gonna start pushing through this open field, the back side, it's all on call wall. See if we can. If anyone's trying to egress, Alpha's gonna block them off. We're gonna push towards uh, this tree line over there where this IED belt used to be. See if we get anybody pushing out that, that direction, we can catch them, you know? So, we'll probably start taking fire. By then, I'll give a signal. Uh, I'll be communicating with Alpha. We're gonna try to get a, the blimp on top of that. And that's what's gonna happen. So, the thing is there. Do you want to call us? Yes, go for it. Get my traces for you. Hey, are you ready? Yes, sir. Where do you want me to shoot it at? Alright, Tony, pick it up. Let's see. Okay. Take that laser fire. Back in that building, I got one o'clock.
On a hilltop overlooking the green zone in Sangin, Afghanistan, a surveillance target acquisition team, also known as STAY, moves into position to scan a known hotspot for Taliban activity. Right over there where you see the open, the open between the tree line, that's where they usually have meetings. They move from that area down south, so be watchful of that area down there. Their targets are two men who were spotted shooting at Marines the day before. Basically, we're watching this hot spot. We've gotten a lot of reporting from historical firing points. So we want to go take a, you know, gander at the area, see what's going on. About two, two and a half hours, we spotted uh, both the individuals. One was heading south, one was heading west. Uh, I didn't have observation on the southern man. Yep. So I kept my uh, focus to the north. He came out once, disappeared into a compound, came out again, went into the corn. Okay, I see you. Came back down the trail, was looking up, kind of turkey peeking, started walking back towards the corn, and that's when I engaged him. He went down on the first shot. Statistics show that about every Taliban a sniper takes down saves about three Marines' lives. So. That's really, at the end of the day, that's what our job is all about. It's saving Marines' lives. And it's something I take very seriously. Marines with 1st Battalion, 6th Marine Regiment take over an abandoned compound in the kinetic village of Pote, Sangin District, Afghanistan. Batteries. Upon their arrival, they are greeted. With an attack by the Taliban. Right there. Go! Coming out, we kind of knew that uh, we weren't welcome in the area. The attack cracked off about 7 o'clock. Uh, they started to break down on us. We had contact from the west, uh, northwest. We had it to uh, the southeast, and then uh, a little bit coming directly south from uh, Taliban Highway. I think they're trying to test the water, see what was going on, feel us out a little bit. We responded well. Mortars had eyes on a guy in a compound. Uh, we knew the compound was abandoned. Uh, as soon as he got in there, and then two more fighters filled that compound. We had direct line of sight to the compound, and knowing that no one else was going to get hurt in the area, we cleared a 60s hot. They dropped two rounds on that building. Yeah! Hey, get another one on it! Get another go. one on it! Fine! Yeah, it's stable. Hey. Get another one on it! Marine spawned great. They've been re responding immediately, which is, that's all I can ask for. With a quick reaction by the Marines and spot on mortar fire, the attack was successfully repelled. Come in here and take over this compound center for BB. Chill, base. We need him to unlock the shop. 
Hey, no, no Marines are going to touch any of his. Yeah, we're not going to take anything. Right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> he needs a light. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Shine your light down in there, Zuzia. Kötü nasıl uçlar zaba varsın? Was it for? Where's the trip at? What's down there? Nothing. Normal sized room, just on the ground. He might care for a Taliban fight. He stabbed the children. Is that the only thing he uses? Yeah. Yeah. That we can destroy them before somebody gets hurt. It's so heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get here today, will you be able to show us where it's so bad? I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. Yılın tavuğu da bu kantada ve cevap ortada seburi yüzüp diyor hatta kesit diyor da ruzun taburi ro. Güzel güzel. Hey. Got you. Pushing. He has the two small sons like him. One is he, one is other one. One. Charles was stable in those days. What? And then uh. Say hi to. Yeah, we're the Marines that are actually live across the street. We're gonna be here uh working with the ANA and the people. We mean we we only get as far as we get to see you. What? The Afghanistan Marines are fat and they will be here to. What? We mean the Marines. And that I'm one of the commanders that live over there. Oh, that you're commanding the brigade Askaro. What? So I got to see what I'm going to do. Ah, ah, ah! I'm going to get it. Yeah, it just ended with the target because I realized how to keep. Hey, so much is going there. Thirty minutes ago, Taliban came by, set up the roadblock. So uh, it was four guys on two motorcycles. Right.
when you hit that spot, you got a tree line that comes like this and a cave in a building. It's murder hole. You got a cave straight ahead in a tree line. It's a textbook an uh, ambush. Will you talk to these guys? See if they know anything about the people that live in this building right here? Okay. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. And then ask them if they know anything about mines or IEDs in this tree line to the right of that building. Okay. As we look at it. You understand? Yeah. All right. Hopefully, build a reputation or build a uh, relationship with you guys. And we would like to know if anyone from the area is not supposed to be, is anyone from outside the area hanging around here that you don't know that we should know about? Stationary talks with some locals, and we start moving, we'll still be heading southeast, east. Right now we're static, talking to some locals. Actually, keep pushing inside the wizard walls doors. We got we're in high mark now. Let's go. Dinner. These are just all little names that one probably do. Make sure we'll watch.
We're not going to be over there 24 hours, so that doesn't have time Uh, no, Matthew's got him. Yo. We're just gonna follow behind there a bit, man. We're just gonna follow behind there a bit, and then we're just gonna set up security while they clear the tree line. Yeah, I know. Got me up, Brown. Allison and them, all those guys. Yeah. Those we cross over on. here more. Okay. Closer to those those rubble buildings. All right. Let's at least get you guys into the field. Right. And yeah. The fields. I want to go any further right. All right now I can't. Oh no no. Right. Some some other time. That's yeah. a firm. <laughs> oh, That's our, do I need a call in for this one? Roger. Hey, Corona. Yes. I've seen you put that dog out there like 150, 200 meters. Hey, buddy, get some pressure. Hey, take a look at the tree line. Uh... Good, bro. Fucking shoot a 203 in that door. I only got so many 203s. Shoot a 203 in that fucking door. Is that? 
I'm Corporal Kevin Ice, uh, I'm a machine gun squad leader. Uh, Alpha Company's mission uh, here in Sangin is to uh, secure Route 611 so that uh, they can transfer a turbine up to uh, Kajaki Dam to provide uh, power for all of Helmand Province. So we're just uh, running patrols out, uh, getting uh, making acquaintance with uh, the locals, estab establishing a uh, base of friendship, letting them know that we're not here to hurt them, that we're here to provide them with security. Uh, also, we're working with the Afghan National Army, uh, developing a friendship with them, getting familiar with them, working and making friends uh, so that we can all work together to uh, accomplish the one mission. Uh, the terrain uh, differs. Um, it's a lot, especially in, a, in the brown zone, it's, it's a lot of, you know, mountains and stuff. Uh, but in the green zone, you know, you got cornfields, ditches, canals. Uh, it, it, it all depends on what area you're in. Uh, the corn should be coming down soon, so it's going to be a lot of open, openness. Uh, but it's a lot, a lot of trees, a lot of, you know, farmers working constantly. So uh, sometimes, sometimes it's a pain, you know. Uh, you know, you got the wa or the wadis here. The canals are not too deep, most of them. Uh, but so when they irrigate their fields and stuff like that, it's really muddy, so it makes it harder to maneuver. Um, the corn is a uh, kind of a pain too sometimes, but we can also use that to our advantage for uh, cover and concealment. So, uh, kinetics with the Taliban. So far, uh, I've been in one firefight. Um, having all the locals here say that the, uh, the Taliban doesn't really bother them much, uh, but uh, so far, you know, we, you know, we've only been here for about a week, I uh, haven't really seen too much, uh, hopefully that stays that way, you know, um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, as of right now, uh, all I know is that we're here. Uh, PB Georgia, and uh, our mission is to, uh, you know, make sure, like I said, that we secure our AO in the route of 611. Um, other than that, uh, I, don't, I couldn't really tell you what the future holds for Alpha Company, but I do know that while we're here, we are going to do our best to make this place uh, not only safer for the locals, but, you know, better uh, style of living as well. So... Uh, well, it was actually a 1 5 is my old unit. We ripped with uh, Blackfoot, which is Bravo 1 5. Uh, partially the reason why I came out here to 3 7 kilo was uh, just that simple fact that you know, I shared a, a bit of history with 1 5. And uh, they, were, they were very helpful. Their squad leaders were very knowledgeable Sergeant Marlowe, uh, Sergeant Nelson, uh, Corporal Mullet, uh, all you know, very knowledgeable beings. Uh, passed a lot of the knowledge on, uh, a lot of the uh, key points and key terrain of the area, uh, just how to maneuver, and uh, things that you know we already know, but just to kind of refine them, make them a little bit uh, easier, you know, so that we're not roughing up guys and doing things that uh, you know that you've heard of other units doing. Uh, the kids, you know, they're a real big sign, and uh, and you know what what we do, you know, you see the kids out there and they're happy with you and they're you know they're tugging on you and asking you how you're doing and asking you for chocolate and. Pens, um, you know you're doing good because they keep coming up to you, you know, and they, they always give you high fives and things like that. So, one five taught us that, you know, that that it's not like when three seven was your last time, where it's you know a constant threat. And uh, we're in Sangin, uh, Sangin, Afghanistan, um, right by the river. I mean, there's not really a much, you know, other than using that military jargon uh, or grids and things like that. But yeah, we're uh, we're right by the Helmand River. Uh, second platoon is we rotate out of this uh, this little PB year. Um, it's uh, a lot of farmers. There's a lot of farmers out here. Um, you know, nomads are rolling in. Uh, they're coming from the mountains. 
and uh, just a lot of new faces. Um, but other than that, it seems to be a, a very friendly area. I think it's when we don't see that. That's probably when we should uh, you know, definitely raise the eyebrow. Uh, through this deployment, we hope to accomplish just uh, maintaining that security uh, in the area, you know, not really, definitely not backing down or stepping back from anything, uh, you know, keeping, keeping that presence with the locals, you know, we've made a lot of, a lot of friendships out here, a lot of, uh, a lot of relationships with uh, elders, mullahs, um, shop owners, uh, you know, even some of the younger males, they, uh, we've actually, uh, you know, gained somewhat of a trust with them to where we can you know count on them to you know uh, to help us out while we're out there you know and point out uh, point out any kind of you know danger area or something that might be a it might be a threat to you know coalition forces but that and along with uh, being able to hand over this whole you know this battle space to the a and a uh, allowing them to further their operations and keep it secure uh, so that will we do so the locals don't see, you know, U.S. forces just backing out. They see it's a, it's a joint operation. We're kind of trading and handing over back to them, and they see that it's now it's you know it's in their hands, and uh, they can trust the A and A, the A and P, and the ANCOP. So uh, that's that's mainly what we uh, hope to accomplish. And uh, so far, we haven't had uh, too many problems. Uh, we've been doing a pretty good job, you know, with uh, the help of our our interpreters uh, and the A and A, you know, and our ETT teams. Uh, they've been they've been helping us out, making sure that we have that uh, that relationship established. Um, I think it's been been going pretty pretty well. We've had tremendous success, I would say, with the turnout at the local shuras, uh, starting with our during our rip with one five, um, increased within that the next seven to eight days uh, of the first shura that I did with the platoon commander from one five um, into the into the next one that we had. When we'd actually uh, post transfer of authority, uh, we had about 35 to 40 locals representing each of the five um, the five villages in our AO. So uh, they seemed to be pretty happy with the work that One Five had, had done prior to us getting here. Uh, I think it was a pretty smooth transition um, from our platoon uh, taking over for for theirs, and then uh, the locals seemed to. Be be pretty satisfied with the security that we've been providing, um, and they seem to be content in terms of reaching out to us, letting us know, uh, you know, when they're doing certain things in their fields, to let us know that they're not, uh, they're not Taliban, and uh, <clears throat> just kind of doing everything that we've asked them to do uh, to, to mitigate any issues that we that we would have, you know, not looking at them as is Taliban, but recognize them as the local people that should be here versus Taliban that's been kind of infiltrating from different parts of the AO. Overall, our, our, our kind of mission is is to provide security for the locals right now to prevent Taliban from coming in and establishing this, uh, establishing a base to operate from. Um, one five did a really good job uh, taking over for three five, which took over for three seven last year. Um, after they cleared pretty much the most of the Sangin Valley, um, and uh, at this point, we just kind of want to continue on those gains in terms of uh, keeping the AO clear of Taliban influence, making sure that the local people are protected, uh, making sure that they feel secure, they're able to continue on with their their daily lives, whether it's uh, farming or, or teaching their kids, or wanting to establish uh, more of an infrastructure uh, in the in the area, such as. You know, building roads, um, getting schools up and running, uh, getting river crossings, uh, bridges, and things like that that allows them to facilitate their way of life in a, in a you know a uh, more efficient way, more productive way, uh, and ultimately us partnering with our patrols with the local A and A to eventually turn over to them. So uh, when when U.S. forces pull out of Afghanistan, um, ultimately. The goal is to for the the Afghans to be able to protect themselves and, and continue on the job that we've we've kind of helping them to do now. It's I think it's been relatively quiet, which I think is a success. I think it's a tremendous. Um, I think it speaks highly of the work that that three five and, and one five one five did prior to us getting here. Um, you know, you kind of in my mind it's, it's kind of what you want to see um, the AO has been pretty quiet in terms of uh, <clears throat> we haven't had any small arms fire, direct fire incidents with, with any enemy 
uh, or any insurgents. Um, I think that could change any day. I, I like to think that, that we're prepared to, to handle it. Uh, you know, at, at any point along any patrol that goes out, uh, any time of the day. Um, that said, you know, it's not something we're we're hoping for. Hopefully, that you know we're doing a good enough job of providing security that. The Taliban doesn't want to come back. That the locals feel secure in us being here, and that we're, we're you know, effectively um, providing security to this to the whole area. Uh, no, I think we've got a, a great group of young young guys here to, to do the job that we're tasked to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm proud of the work that we've done so far. It's only been a month. We've got another five and a half, six to go. But uh, at this point, of the deployment, um, you know. We've, we've managed to stay safe, and I think continuing to, to provide uh, security to the locals in this village, uh, especially the, the reaction that we've had from them, um, which has just been nothing but but positive uh, reinforcement of the work that we're doing. The fact that they feel they can come to us at any point uh, and talk to us here at our, at our OP um, and, and show us around the AO, lead us through their fields without worrying about the threat of IDs, Every step they take, I think, is it speaks volumes about <coughs> the uh, the relationship that we've established, and, and hopefully, we'll continue to maintain throughout the rest of the deployment. C, 3rd Combat Engineer Battalion. Uh, what we did was, uh, Route, Route 611 I hadn't been traveling in quite some time, uh, all the way up here to, to the Jockey Dam. So, uh, my uh, platoon uh, here uh, was tasked with clearing the route, essentially, um, from down, the, down from the Sangin area all the way up to the Jockey Dam in order to uh, open up the lines of communication uh, in the area and allow uh, the government infrastructure of Afghanistan to uh, take root in an area that uh, has not seen coalition uh, force presence. So uh, on the 14th of October, uh, elements of uh, Task Force 16, which was a, a task force that consisted of infantry, um, we had about 400 engineers uh, in, the, in the mission itself uh, as well, and uh, they essentially started on the 14th all the way down at the uh, Alcatraz just north of Sangin, and uh, we just uh, recently got up here to Kajaki. Uh, but it's not done. We still have a, a lot of work to do in order to uh, ensure that that uh, critical line of communication up here to the dam remains open. Uh, we did have some en enemy contact. Uh, we did receive some uh, IED activity. Uh, we found an IED. We struck an IED. We had some small arms fire along the route up. But like anything else, if uh, you have a strong security posture, and uh, the Marines are doing the right thing and everybody comes home safely and, and that's essentially what, what occurred over the past couple days. You know, the Marines Company C, 3rd CB, did a fantastic job out here. Uh, we had COB elements of COB-6 out here doing PB builds uh, to make sure that we had observation all the way along a route that uh, is, quite frankly, pretty, pretty dangerous. So uh, the Marines are doing fantastic things, keeping each other safe and uh, working, partnering uh, very closely with the ANA and the uh, AUP and the Afghani forces in order to uh, make sure that this area remains safe in the future.
You see where the alley is? Yeah. Right on the other, like right on the other side. Like he, he blocked it with a rock. Okay. But like a meter in, there's one there. And then you see that big tree that we kind of went around to this side to look at mm -hmm. it. Kind of on the back side. I can't tell if it's uh, on this side or on the back side of the tree, but there's definitely one there as well. Okay. We'll exploit this tomorrow. Is that it though? No, exactly. I'm Sergeant Sekwe, I'm Sergeant Lugo, and we are the female engagement team. The acronym FET has been introduced and used with more frequency as we continue to help the people of Afghanistan. You might have heard it or read it, but what does FET stand for and what does it really mean? FET stands for Female Engagement Team. A FET is a program that we come out here to engage the female population, gather atmospherics on their village, find out a little bit more about what's going on and build relationships. <laughs> the ladies can define FET because for the past seven months, they've been living it. Sar Lugo and Sar Sekli have been great working with. They love going out, they love interacting with the people. Yo. Using the uh, female engagement team has been a good experience. This is my second deployment working with the FET, and I think it's a great asset to have as a small unit leader. It helps us gain access into compounds and villages easier than if we didn't have it. However, being part of FET is more than just a day-to-day -day mission. It's something to be proud of. I believe it's history. I believe we're making a change where there is, you know, for the females in the military, for the women of Afghanistan, female engagement team is uh, an experience that you'll never forget. When we come into the compound, you know, the women are usually kind of off in the corner since they're not allowed to speak to any of the men. And uh, we get to talk to them, and it's nice to be able to give them a voice too. I'm going to try to the ladies say their success wouldn't be possible without the support of their command and the Marines of 3-7. Marine Corporal Luis Cisneros, Sangin Province, Afghanistan.